So in this video, we're going to be learning how to create a really simple Python countdown. So it's going to create a 24 hour clock that's going to count down to a specific time that we set. So here's our Python program. And if I put in, for example, 10 seconds, I hit enter. You can see it gives us the number of hours, the number of minutes and the number of seconds. And you can see now it's just counting down and it's not printing it out on a new line. It's just printing it out and overriding itself over and over again. And then once the countdown's finished, it disappears. And then we can type another time in, we could say five seconds and then you can see it counts down as you'd expect. So this is quite a simple tutorial, but it goes over some stuff that's quite useful. For example, if I put in 60 seconds, but you can see it's able to convert from seconds into as many seconds, minutes and hours as we need. We're also gonna be going over how to print something out onto the screen and then override it so that we're not having to print all the times out on a new line. So let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is we have to create a loop. So this is just our program loop that runs in the background. That means we can keep providing more and more input. We're gonna create a variable called un and it's gonna be equal to the input. And that's how we're going to grab the input from the user. Next, we're going to try to convert that input into a number. So we're just going to say when to stop is equal to the absolute value of the integer that we entered earlier. And then we're going to first capture keyboard interrupt, break out of the loop, which will close our program. And if we don't get a keyboard interrupt, we're just going to assume that the number wasn't a number. So we're just going to say not a number. Next, we're just going to create another loop and this loop is going to say while when to stop is greater than zero. So this is going to be our actual counting down method. We're just going to say when to stop minus equals one just to subtract one from that so that we can actually do the countdown. And what we're going to do is we're going to print out when to stop. Now, if I just run this, I put in a number set 10. You can see it prints out all the numbers down from 10 to one, but it doesn't actually count down one per second and it doesn't keep them on one line. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work out how many minutes and seconds our seconds get converted into. So we're gonna use the div mod function to divide the number of seconds, which is our when to stop variable by 60 to work out the number of minutes. And we're gonna store the number of minutes and the number of seconds in two variables. Next, we're gonna do the same thing for hours. We're gonna store the number of hours in minutes. We're gonna do that by saying div mod, and we're gonna divide m by 60. Now if I print that out, so we print out str h m and s. Now if we save that and run it, you can see we got our countdown. What we also wanna do is keep the leading zero. So to do that, what we wanna do is scroll down and say str h dot Z fill, just pass in two, Z fill two again, because we want two columns to be taken up. Save that, run that, and now you can see we get the proper format. But we're still taking more than one line and our countdown isn't going down one per second like it should. So we can slow our countdown by importing the time module. And after we print out our output, we can just say time.sleep and we can make it sleep for one second. Save that and run it. And now you can see we're getting the countdown as we'd expect, but it's still not on one line. So to fix that, all we have to do is go back into our program. And instead of printing out this string, we're gonna copy that and we're gonna store it in a variable called time left. And then we're gonna print out time left, but we're gonna remove the new line that print automatically puts in for us. So to do that, we just say end equals, and we just pass in an empty string. And what we wanna do is we wanna use the cars return character to return to the start of the line after we print out a certain time. That way we can return to the start of the line and over write it because if we save this so you can see when we run that we just get all of the dates printed out on one line so to fix that what we want to do is we want to put in a carriage return so if we save that what this will do is it'll return us to the start of the line so if i put in any number and run it now you can see it's overriding itself at the start of the line. So by putting in the carriage return, what's gonna happen is instead of going to a new line, which is backslash n, it's gonna go back to the beginning of the current line that it's on and it's gonna overwrite what was already in that line. And we're gonna put in, and we're gonna just print out a new line at the bottom. We're gonna save that. And now if we run this, I'm just gonna put in something like five seconds to begin with. And now you can see our countdown finished. Now if I put in something even longer, say 86,400, which is the number of seconds in a day, hit enter, you can see, there we go, it's counting down 23 hours, 59 minutes, 55 seconds remaining. So that's how we create a really simple countdown function in Python. You could really easily extend this. You could get it to count down to a specific date. All you would have to do is get the user to enter a date and get Python to convert that into seconds and then pass it to the function we've just created. And then you would have a countdown to any date in the future that you want. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. If you have any questions, don't forget to email me at francis at Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. But that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.